Hello SO friends and welcome to this video today where we're going to be talking about upgrades and upgrades for AEGs in particular because there's many upgrades that you can do. Different upgrades have different results, different impacts and can kind of like potentially cause different issues before you later down the line. So we're going to talk about what those upgrades are, what you can do, what's easy, what's not so easy and uh, how you can get your biggest bang for your buck when looking to upgrade your rifle. So today I'm going to be using my Crytac CRB Mark II Trident uh, M4. I love this thing. It was my second M4 that I purchased. It's had some work done to it. And uh, yeah, I don't use it too much at the minute because I'm loving my sniping, but this is always in my kit bag just in case I want to, you know, get down and dirty and, and run around and, 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 you know, spray some people down because that's very fun. So what are the first best easiest upgrades you can do to get the, the biggest impact for your money? Well, the first one I would say is your hop rubber because the hop rubber is what contacts the BB. So if your hop rubber is naff, then your BB is going to be naff. And it doesn't matter then, you know, what your rate of fire is like, um, what your FPS is like, you know, how long your barrel is or anything like that. If your hot rubber is terrible, then your shot's going to be terrible and inaccurate. So let's do that first of all. And it's super easy to do. All you need to do, bacha, pull your pin out, bacha, slide your upper receiver off just like that. And then all you do, get your hop unit, pull that off. And then you've got your barrel, your hop unit, your hop rubber, all in one piece. And then in order to get your barrel out, there's a little clip here on your hop unit, which you can see. Mine under some PTFE tape because I've done that to keep it all nice and together. Slide that off, pull your barrel off with your hop rubber on, pull your hop rubber off, put a new hop rubber on, and then you're all good to go. In terms of hop rubbers, I would always recommend the Prometheus Purple hop rubber. It's very, very, very good. I've used quite a few hop rubbers in my time, and uh, that's been the one I found to be the best performance, um, lasts the longest, and all my friends and I swear by it. So yeah, Prometheus Purple hop rubber, swap it out, put it in your AEG, and it'll be fantastic. Swapping your hop rubber can also potentially increase your FPS a little bit if it gives you a better air seal, and I find that the Prometheus Purple ones do just that. The design of it gives a really nice kind of like um, valve insert hole, which keeps it nice and nice and airtight. Next up is the barrel, and essentially you do the exact same thing, you get your barrel there, take your barrel out, take the hot rubber off, put your new barrel in, and then you are all good to go. The benefits of your barrel, if you put it longer, you can get better accuracy, better range, and you can also increase your FPS. However, your FPS can also go down, and your accuracy can also be degraded too, if you have too long of a barrel. Essentially, the cylinder that you've got in the gun, is a, there's a certain amount of air which that can compress, and if there's too long of a barrel, your cylinder won't be able to compress enough air to fill the whole barrel volume, and your BB will actually start decelerating it in the barrel itself, which is bad and will reduce FPS and make accuracy bad because your BB will probably be bouncing around in the end of the barrel, which will then make your BB go all over the place. So be careful not selecting an extra long barrel. Generally in AEGs, I'd say 370 or 380 mil is the longest barrel you really want to go to. Anything beyond that, you're probably going to have to start messing around with different cylinders in order to get the right volume. And then at that point, if you are increasing your cylinder volume, you're probably going to be increasing your FPS as well and uh, then you're kind of in DMR territory. So if you have a regular rifle or AEG, maybe only look to go to about 370 mil in your barrel length. Next up, you've got your battery, nice easy one to do. All you need to do is go to a website, buy a different battery, and then hey, you're all set to go. But you need to be careful, you need to make sure that your gun is set up to take the different types of battery. If you're running NIMS, for example, I'd recommend swapping across to LiPo. And if you're running 7.4 volt LiPo, I'd recommend you use 11.1 volts, because when I made that swap over, it was like night and day. Trigger response was better, my rate of fire I went up and I was just like, why did I spend my life using 7.4s? Why didn't I use 711.1s? They're much better. So yeah, that's a really good option for you to use. 11.1 volt LiPos are, I'd say, definitely the best type of batteries out there, but check with your manufacturer and groups, first of all, just to check that they are compatible with your riff. It may make your trigger burn out faster, but to be fair, you, you, you're going to be upgrading your gun. That's not really going to be a big issue at the end of the day. And you're still going to get years of use out of it. So don't worry too much about it. Finally, for the easy upgrades, I've got down here as sights and furniture. And what I mean by that is like sights, like red dot sights, because iron sights are terrible. Furniture, like grips, things like that too. And also included in this, I'd say, is tracer units. So on my rifle, I've got an extended outer barrel here because my inner barrel goes out to about this length here. And then if I do want to run a tracer, I can just take my flash 
hider off, put my tracer on, and then I can light up the darkness with all of my lovely BBs. How wonderful. All of those kind of upgrades will increase your accuracy and usability because, you know, with the sight and the grip, if you're holding it more comfortable and you can see where your BBs going better, then of course you're going to be more accurate. It just makes sense. Now for the medium difficulty upgrades, and these are medium not because they're actually like more difficult to do than the easy ones, it's more that they can lead to issues later down the line if you don't just, you know, if, if you're not careful about it. The first medium difficulty one I've got down here is the motor. And to do the motor, all you need to do is take these two screws out here, pull that plate off, remove the wires, and then boom, your motor comes out. You can put another motor in super easy, either like a high speed one if you want to get more rate of fire, or a high torque one if you've got like a stronger spring in there. One thing that you need to remember though is to make sure that you know which wire goes on which, because if you put your motor in with the wires the wrong way around, the motor will spin the other way, potentially causing issues in there, or it won't spin, or it could break your MOSFET, or things like that. So make sure you remember which wire goes where on your motor. Also, things to look out for, and this is why the motor is a medium, is it can lead to breakage within the gearbox. So if you put in a high speed motor, you're putting extra stress on your gears, you put putting extra stress on your piston and the piston teeth. And it's quite common for piston teeth to break if they're just like the plastic pistons in there. And I've stripped a few pistons in my lifetime too. So that's something to be careful of. Conversely, if you put a, a harder wearing spring in there because you want to increase your FPS, putting in a torque motor, it's not going to give it like tons of speed, which will like increase the stresses but that extra power from the spring will increase the pressure on the piston and you could potentially crack it break it, break the piston head, things like that too. So these are medium because they could potentially cause issues with other things in your riff. So things to take care of. The other medium one I've got is to change up your hop unit. So that would be this little guy here. And you can see I've already actually got an upgraded one on my AEG. The benefits of doing your hop unit is accuracy and sometimes FPS because with these ones being a bit more accurately machined and made a bit better, everything lines up a bit more. So you can sometimes get a better air seal in there. Um, and also that will then lead to, you know, better consistency, better accuracy, better range, better FPS. However, the reason why this is a medium is sometimes not all upgrade uh, hop units are made the same. And sometimes they could have little niggly issues with some riffs out there. So you may find the one you get for your riff doesn't fit quite right and, uh, and actually causes you some issues. So the reason why this is a medium is it could mean that you need to tinker around a little bit to find some issues that you've potentially made yourself. But it's quite nice to do that because once you've tinkered about, then you'll learn more about your riff. So if you do have issues in future, you'll know how to fix them, which is lovely. Then last but not least, the hard upgrades for an AEG. And these are, generally speaking, if you've never opened up a, a, a gearbox before, this is hard because you can't like just change your spring without then having to know where everything else in the gearbox goes. You know, your spring, your piston, your piston head, um, the cylinder, all of your gears, your trigger unit, your MOSFET, all of that stuff is inside the gearbox. And when you want to take anything out or swap anything or upgrade anything, you're going to need to know where all of that goes. Also, it's probably a good shout whenever you open up your gearbox, just to clean everything down, remove all of the grease, re-grease it, and then put it back together. And then that way, if you don't open your gearbox for a long time, at least you know it's all nice and clean and greased in there. Some rifles, like my one does have a quick change spring, which means that I just need to take a bolt out of the back of the gearbox and I can change the spring, which is something I wholly recommend if you're looking to get an AEG because it makes upgrading the spring and swapping it out so much easier and better. But try and get one that's actually a true quick change spring, like my little SAEA 10, whatever thing, little M4. I just need to take the, um, the buttstock off and then there's a bolt there. I take that off and then boom, spring. With this one, I still need to take the gearbox out of the, the lower receiver, which is just a bit of a pain really. And uh, I wouldn't really class as quick change, more like medium change spring. But at least I don't have to open up the gearbox, which is always a plus. So yeah, there's plenty of guides online and I will do in future like a video of me opening up the gearbox. I try and do it as little as possible just because it's just a bit of a pain sometimes to, you know, take everything out. It's all greasy in there and, and whatnot. And the anti-reverse latch is a bit of a pain, but we'll cover that in another video. So you know exactly what goes where when we open up a gearbox. And last but not least, I've put on there practice. Practice using your gun because the muscle memory is something which you need to build up and it's going to really help you out in the field because instead of having to think about where your hands need to go, they'll just automatically go there and uh, you'll have a much better time as a result. And also, don't try and force your rifle to be something it isn't. If your rifle is a short range, you know, bursty type rifle, run it like that. If you like shooting people at range, run it like that. There's nothing worse than getting a rifle and forcing it to play with your play style because the rifle can't change its play style unless you upgrade it and change it. What you should do is figure out how your rifle runs, what it likes to do, what it's good at, and then just try and run it that way. 
because yeah, if you've got like a super long rifle and you're trying to run it at CQB, it's probably not really gonna work out that well. And conversely, if you've got a stubby rifle and you're always trying to shoot at people really far away from you, you're probably not gonna land those hits. So learn what your rifle is, learn what it likes to do, and then complement that with your game style and you're gonna have a really good time. And that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching and a huge shout out to all of my lovely patrons, supporting the channel every single month, getting fantastic extra rewards and bonuses. And uh, yeah, you've got my undying love and gratitude. Thank you very much. Also, I want to do a big shout out because we surpassed 2,000 subs and we're now almost at or just over 2.4k, which is absolutely insane and very humbling. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm so happy you're enjoying the content and you're sharing the channel and yeah, just getting involved. I bloody love it. It's, oh, it's so, so good. Pretty much the last shout out now for the raffle that's going to be going on at the end of this month. If you're on the Patreon and you're at the Airsoft Legend tier or higher, then you're going to be in with a chance of winning a £50 Project Airsoft voucher or an airsoft sniper rifle as well, which is very exciting. We're going to be doing the draw live on Monday, this Monday, and uh, yeah, we'll be announcing our two winners and uh, also announcing some also exciting news, which may or may not be linked or clued to uh, right now. So yeah, very exciting stuff, some cool things to come. We're going to be mixing up the Patreon uh, in February as well, and that change will happen from the second, so we can do the draw on the Monday. Uh, and then on the Tuesday, uh, everything's going to be refreshed and nude. But all that info is going to come on the live stream on the Monday. So make sure you're subbed. Make sure you're here to check that out. Really exciting news to come. As always, this episode was sponsored by Project Airsoft. So go check out the website for upgrades, accessories, and things to make your airsoft life a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Remember to call your hits, and I'll see you in the next one.